What's going on guys? Welcome back to my favorite fishing hole in the entire world. One of them anyway. I'm at this little stream that you guys have probably seen me fish before. If you follow my channel at all, it's this little creek nestled in the mountains of Utah. And I like coming here because you can literally come here and catch four or five different species of trout all in one day. There's actually a dam over here behind those trees and they just let out, they're starting to let out more water as the snow starts melting more for the farmers to water their crops. So higher flows can mean that the fish are more active, but it also means that they can be more spread out. But this hole right here has like a hundred fish in it for some reason. They like this hole more than anywhere else in the entire stream. Just right here, right there, so guys, we're gonna give it a try. Throw a worm down there, throw a spinner down there. Hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned. Let's get started. All right, so the first lure I'm gonna be starting off with are just these power bait pink worms. Um, I've used these before for stock trout and ponds, and dude, they work insanely well. But the fish in here, they're more wild. Um, a lot of them are wild, and you know, they're gonna be a lot harder to fool. So we're gonna throw one of these on a hook and uh, see what we can get. Well, you guys, interesting. Not a bite, not a follower, nothing on the artificial. So uh, I'm gonna switch to a real worm and see if it's just because they're not eating today or because they're, they're that smart. Little artificial versus live bait challenge here. All right, so now we got a real night crawler on. Let's see if this will get them. Oh, there's one. Oh my gosh. I was losing faith. It's crazy, dude. What do we got here? Oh yeah, baby. Heck yeah. Oh, with my hand, I don't want to offend anybody. Here we go, guys. Well, uh, our experiment is conclusive. Live bait catches them way better. I didn't get a bite off that pink worm, but got this guy. He actually swallowed the hook pretty bad and there's no way he's getting it out. That's just, that's the nature of using live bait. Even though I was like reeling constantly, I didn't let it sit there and let him eat it. He still, he still swallowed it. But that's totally fine because these little guys are absolutely delicious. If you've watched my catch and cook videos I've made here, these little splake are absolutely delicious. All right, there we go. Not a very big fish, but definitely eating size. Let's keep fishing. Just give it another cast. Um, usually, unless the fishing is really, really tough, I always let the first fish of the day go. You gotta appease the fish gods. But uh, when they swallow it like that, I mean, obviously you gotta keep them. Oh, there's another one. Yeah! Oh, tiger trout. You guys, the tiger trout is my mascot for my channel. Like if you agree. I catch more tiger trout than anything else. There he goes. <laughs> oh, those are funny little guys. There's, oh. Ooh, missed one. Oh, there's one. Got him. Got him. Got him, boy. What is it? What is it? Let's play everybody's favorite game. What is it? It's a tiger trout. That's that's a shocker. Guys, I think we're going to keep this one. And we're going to do a hybrid trout species catch and cook taste test. Let me bonk them on the head here real quick. All right, guys. So we have here two fish that we're going to keep. Tiger trout and a splake. And if you didn't know, a tiger trout is actually a hybrid between a brown trout and a brook trout. And a splake is a hybrid between a brook trout and a lake trout. And from my experience, for some reason, hybrid trout tastes way better than just like a regular old rainbow or brown trout. I don't know why, it all depends on what they eat, but that's just from my experience. So we're gonna cook these two guys up side by side 
and see which one tastes better. But before we do that, I'd like to catch a couple more fish, hopefully like a brown trout. I know there's a lot of brown trout in this hole. And uh, yeah, let's keep casting. Guys, I am shocked, like actually shocked. I know there's tons of fish right here in front of me and I've only got a couple bites. This is nuts. All right guys, well, I think that does it for me fishing this stream anyway. As you can see, the sun's starting to go down behind that mountain and I just don't see, I just don't see it happening at this stream. They are not biting very good. I only caught two, two keepers, so that's good, but I think I'm gonna head to this lake that's about 15 minutes away and see if I can get an actual actual big fish. And this lake has some pretty big fish. So uh, let's head over there. All right guys, here we are, spot number two. I actually just made a video here. It's one of my favorite lakes when I just really wanna catch a lot of fish. And I'm just gonna be chilling right here on the shore. And I'm just gonna throw out a couple rods with some worms and like power bait and see if we can get a couple nice fish and at the same time cook those other two trout that we caught earlier. All right guys, so funny story, I actually have not used power bait in years, like years and years. In fact, this little can of power bait, I don't even think it's good, it's probably expired. It's been in my truck for probably like two years at this point. I never use power bait because you always got hooked the fish and it's really expensive. It's like $5 for this. So I figured I might as well just use it up before it gets any any uh, nastier than it already is. All right, and we'll just set our rod right here in this little rod holder. There we go. All right, guys, it is cooking time. I have my rod out right there, and I'm just gonna cook up this fish right here on the shore. There we go. Set our frying pan on. We're gonna go ahead and sit a lot of butter down. It's already melted. It's been kind of warm today. I think it's like 70 degrees today. Just crazy warm. And then we have our fish here. First thing, we're gonna salt him inside, especially. And then what I have here is some garlic and herb McCormick seasoning, roasted garlic and herb. I actually use this on a steak. And it was so, so good. Probably one of my favorite seasonings. So we're gonna throw some down on him. We're also gonna throw some down in the pan. And we have some salt-free all-purpose seasoning by McCormick. I'm gonna put some on there as well. And on the bottom of the pan. And we're gonna mix all that up. And then we'll set the splake right in there. Same thing for the tiger trout, salt him up, set him in there, put some roasted garlic and herb, and some all-purpose seasoning, and then we'll just kind of grill those up. Haven't got a bite in a while. Huh. Doesn't look like anything's touched it in a while. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and give these guys a try before they're even done cooking. Only one side is done. Look at that. Look at that. Little piece of tiger trout here. Mm. I'm really liking that McCormick as well. And the roasted garlic and herb. I think I just found like two of my favorite new seasonings. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, that looks so, so good. What a great little evening. Nice and calm, fairly calm, perfect temperature. I think it was like 75 degrees for the high today, which is freaking warm for this time of year. Look at that fish, cooked to perfection. All right, let's give this a try. This is the tiger trout. We'll try him first. Get a nice piece of skin in there. All right, tiger trout, skin and all. Got to give a fair analysis here. Now for the splake. Make sure to get some skin in there. Oh, look at that. That is crazy. 
The tiger trout has way more orange meat than this splake. It's a nice big piece right there. All right, splake. It's good, but that is some interesting texture. That is so, it's like rubbery almost. I've only had catfish one time and it almost has the texture of a catfish. I think I have a winner on my hands. The texture on both of them are so different, like really different. But if we're just gonna go by flavor, I think the tiger trout is gonna take the dub today, boys. That's why I like doing these uh, comparisons because it's not always what you would what you would expect. All right, guys, before I end this video, there are fish surfacing everywhere. It is like s dead calm right now. And there's literally swirlies. Like, you know how you'll see a fish swirl on top or jump? There's those little swirls. There's like dozens across this lake that I can see. So I've got my power bait out and let's see if we can get a fish. Okay, guys, I think we're getting a bite. Yeah, that's a fish. That's a fish. Oh, wait, did he come off? No, I still got him. Oh my, it's tiny. <laughs> I thought he came off. No, that is a tiny little fish. There we go, guys. This is what happens when they stalk a lake. You got all these little uh, stalkers like this. That they're just so dumb and they'll eat anything. They just, they just go crazy. These guys are not the best tasting fish in the world, so this guy seems okay, so we're just gonna let him go. There go. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna end the video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did. Fun day and a beautiful evening out here. I mean, there are literally fish <laughs> surfacing everywhere and jumping. I saw one jump like two feet out of the air, out of the water. Scroll down and hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it. And while you're doing that, why don't you go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. And uh, let me know in the comments below what other videos you'd like to see me do. But uh, other than that, you guys, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.